Oceans cover more than 70% of the surface of our planet, and the ocean waters contain about 20 million tons of gold in them. Based on today's price of gold, that's worth roughly $771 trillion. But how can one collect it? Now, I'm not talking about lost Spanish or pirate's gold. There is literally gold in ocean water. Unfortunately, the concentration lies on the order of parts per trillion, making it extremely difficult to get. But just so we get a grasp on how much $771 trillion is, that's 10 times the GDP of the entire world last year. Needless to say, within the oceans of the world, you can find a lot of gold. However, removing gold from a vast amount of seawater is a monumental task. There would be approximately 13 billionths of a gram of gold in each liter of water. It is not as easy as panning for gold to find the gold in the oceans, but it is a good place to look if you love gold. The problem is, there's only one gram of gold per 110 million tons of ocean water, but that has to stop some. Currently, there is no cost-effective way to remove gold from seawater. Many eager inventors and investors, both legitimate and scammers, did not let this deter them. Pastor Ford Jernigan dreamed up a plan for a gold accumulator in the 1890s. A mercury and electricity treatment process was planned to extract gold from the Long Island Sound. It was essentially a wooden box with holes in it that inside had a sheet of solid mercury that was mixed with a secret ingredient. There was a wire attached to the battery that ran through the mercury and electrified it. Jernigan sold people this weird electrified wooden box so that they could get rich quick by sucking gold from the water. Jernigan founded the Electrolic Marine Salts Company and raised $1 million in cash, equivalent to $26 million today. It was off and running, building a large gold extraction operation in Lubeck, Maine, far from their investors' watchful eyes. As early as 1898, investors began asking questions and requesting evidence that the plant actually worked. Following that, Jernigan disappeared with cash in hand and left behind the useless contraption. The attempts to extract gold from seawater have not all been scams. Henry Clay Bull filed a patent for a method to extract gold from seawater in 1900, lowering the acidity to supposedly pull out dissolved ions including gold ions. However, Bull never tried his device out. Nobel laureate Fritz Haber spent years researching this in the 1920s and came up with what appears to be a legitimate centrifuge process. It turned out that he made a simple mathematical error early on and this process ended up costing more than you'd actually get back in gold. Typically, gold is extracted from rocks or sediment by a process called gold cyanidation where gold is dissolved in water. During gold cyanidation, electrons are transferred from one species to another through an oxidation reduction or redox reaction by removing electrons from gold atoms. Oxygen leaves them with a positive charge, allowing them to form a complex and negatively charged cyanide. In 1990, researchers discovered that seawater contains about one gram of gold per hundred million tons. Having boiled down one liter of seawater, one can find that it contains about 50 femtomol per liter of gold, which is about 10 pictograms. In some cases, metal organic framework have been used to remove gold from seawater. MOFs are clusters of metal ions linked together by organic molecules. The large surface area of MOFs allow them to absorb a lot of whatever they're collecting, and they can be modified to trap different molecules of interest. The surface area of a small piece of metal organic framework the size of your hand might be as large as a football field. These things bind ions, but a lot of ions look similar, and given the small amount of gold you're going to get out of the water, many don't think it's cost effective. People would probably find that a little silly if you talked about making money from it. When it comes to underwater gold mining, one option is to use remotely operated vehicles. However, they can only hold a certain amount of weight and is too time consuming. The rocks could also be brought to service via a belt and mined on land. 
This seems to be the easiest route to get the gold out of the water. There's been a long list of people that have tried and failed extracting gold from the oceans, but all of them have one thing in common. They weren't able to economically extract gold from seawater. You know this massive amount of gold will continue to be attempted in terms of extraction. There actually is lost gold and treasure in the oceans as well. Estimates put this around the $60 billion mark. More than three quarters of the planet is covered by water, which hides not only undiscovered marine species, but also treasures lost. As early as 60,000 to 70,000 years ago, sea crossings were recorded. People began trading with other cultures as they explored and met each other. Ships were used to transport goods not found in their own lands. Additionally, ships were used to transport precious minerals mined from the earth. Despite this, all of marine history has not been without its challenges. Ships that never arrived with their precious cargoes now inspire treasure hunters' dreams. Nuesta Sonora de la Mercedes was a 36-gun frigate that was sunk in 1804. The ship transported silver, gold, and spices from Uruguay to Spain. In response to the British Navy's request to inspect the ship just off the coast of Portugal, the Spanish refused. More than 200 people were on board the ship when it sank after losing a battle against four British Royal Navy ships. Survivors were only rescued to become prisoners. Odyssey Marine Exploration first discovered the ship in 2007, mistaking it for a British ship that had sunk in 1641. The finders did not keep the $500 million worth of treasure found in the recovery of Las Mercedes. In 2012, the Spanish government sued the exploration team, recovering 17 tons of silver and hundreds of gold coins that were theirs to keep. A touring expedition of the treasure and the shipwreck's history has been on display at several Spanish public museums since then, including the Spanish Naval Museum and the National Archaeological Museum. During its growth, the United States shipped its own treasures. In the 1850s, the steamer SS Central America sailed between the United States and Central America. The 280-foot ship encountered a hurricane off the coast of South Carolina during one of its sails in 1857. 425 of the 578 passengers perished along with the ship. Also on board was 30,000 pounds of gold from the gold rush, which caused a financial crisis when it was lost. In 1988, Tommy Thompson found the ship of gold after it had been on treasure hunters' radars for a long time. Thompson and his investors fought bitterly over the $50 million worth of gold discovery which led to Thompson's disappearance. Thompson has not revealed where the treasure is despite being caught. Another $40 million was recovered from the sunken ship in 2014. This might be the easier way to get gold from the ocean floor, it seems. Perhaps one day, one investor or company will find the breakthrough necessary to make extraction profitable, since the prize is just too big to ignore. $771 trillion? Are you kidding me? Well, it's just a golden dream for now.